this is the third installment. So far we have covered the miracle that is your life and external systems and this time we are covering the brain. So the reason that I want to talk about the brain is because we've all got one and I don't think that we are given as much information of what we should be. So we kind of go along, go through life and don't really ever pay much attention to what a brilliant piece of kit we've got up here but also how uh, primitively vulnerable our brain is as well to manipulation, to brainwashing. Our senses are what feeds our brain and the information that then creates this world around us. So everything that we know on the external is because of our brain processing that information and giving us that information. And then strangely on the inside, we've got this vast universe because our imagination allows us to create world upon world within our heads and maybe the way that we're interpreting the world is very different as well so we have the five senses we all know about those they're all kind of like little windows into this world so everything that we see that we smell that we touch that we hear uh, that we taste it's all feeding our brain information to create this world around us plus we've got the sixth senses that we will go into a little bit more later down the line our brain also uses chemicals to evaluate information um, and to dictate our moods i'm just giving you this kind of very brief overview of the brain just to help you understand that everything that we experience is because of the way our brain processes it and that in itself can have big, big impacts on the way we feel, the way we behave, and the way that we learn, and the way that we connect with others and the world around us. Our relationship with our brain is a bit of a two-way street. So our brain is informing our body to do things such as our heart to beat. We're not consciously thinking, okay, beat my heart. But then on the other hand, if I think, itch my head, you know, I only have to think those things and my brain tells my body to do it. So it is a bit of a two-way street. Interestingly, when it comes to things like anxiety, for example, if in the past something happened to us um, that caused a lot of fear, caused us pain, our body will retain that, our brain will retain that information, even if we can't consciously remember it. And then it means if something happens in the future and it feels similar to that, then it will trigger that same response. So that, that anxiety, that fear, um, run away shut down this situation so we just need to be really really aware that that is happening that we that our brain is capable of those things and that can then help us to start managing our own mental health and our own responses the other thing is if we start to think oh my goodness i'm under attack there's something to be scared of our brain will start to arm our body ready for that attack we can kind of trick our brain and hack our brain to use it in a positive way by telling ourselves there's nothing to be scared of. So if you can feel yourself responding in a way towards something, fight or flight is kicking in, just with a little bit of soothing self-talk by reassuring your brain, it's okay, I've got this under control, you can actually talk yourself back out of those reactions as well. So always, always work on the relationship that you have with your brain. Pay attention to what it's responding to. Why is it responding that way? Um, what can I do to make my mood improve? All of these things are um, your accountability, really, to kind of create this manual for yourself as to how your brain works for you. A really disturbing um, piece of information about the brain is that it will lie to you. For example, um, when we see something every day, so say your car or your garden, your brain creates an image that it associates with that so every time you look at your garden it doesn't really create a brand new image every time it just shows you what you've already stored in your brain as your garden which is why things can change and we don't notice that they've changed all of the time because our brain's not making that new information this is how uh, magicians and illusionists get away with the tricks they rely on on the brain doing certain things like that and filling in those gaps the other thing is that eyewitness reports, for example, they, they're not very sturdy or strong because our brain will fill in those gaps. It will make up information to make sense of things that it doesn't understand. It's like this clever piece of kit that doesn't want to overload us or overwhelm us with information. 
But on the other hand, because of those things, it can actually be easily manipulated as well. The other thing that your brain might do is hide information from you. So if something was particularly traumatic, your brain will just allow you to forget about that. So just because you don't consciously remember something doesn't mean that subconsciously that that didn't happen or that that memory is not still there and that it's not still um, actually affecting your behavior and affecting how you think and how you behave and how you feel. Your brain continues preening itself and tuning itself right the way through your life. So even though it, it generally tends to be full size by teenage years and mature by the kind of early 20s, that doesn't mean to say that you can't change certain thought patterns or learn new tricks. What it does do is goes through and has a clear out every now and again of pathways that aren't being used. That's the, the saying around um, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're not using certain information, you may well forget it because the brain will just get rid of that, that part because it's taking up uh, wasted space. This kind of links into habits and addiction as well. So, for example, um, for many, many years, I used alcohol and nicotine to soothe any amount of stress. And even though now I'm free of that addiction, in times of high stress, my brain still is like, oh, you know, smoke or drink because the pathway is well trodden. It's like this road that's been really fully developed. That was the road that I used for 20 years. So although I've not used that road now for a couple of years and it's starting to grow weeds and it's starting to be disused, my new pathway of things like uh, breath work or taking a bath or taking a walk, those uh, pathways are still quite new. So the brain will look for the quickest, easiest, most familiar route when it comes to solving problems. Everybody's brain is actually as unique as their fingerprint. But on the other hand, because we know through biology different areas of the brain that are responsible for different things, we are able to kind of assume um, a neurotypical brain in comparison to a divergent brain, a brain that doesn't operate in the majority way. That's me, <laughs> neurodivergent. So I'd be classed as ADHD, on the autism spectrum, dyspraxic, and lots of other um, very cool labels. Because my brain isn't wired just like the expected, like the majority. But that doesn't mean that I'm abnormal, and it doesn't mean that I will behave in the same way as another person who's got an ADHD label, or another person who's got an autistic label, because we are still pretty unique. The way that your brain wires itself up and develops is a combination of genetics um, and also experience, the way that you were brought up, and um, how you feed your brain. So things like uh, healthy foods and plenty of water, things like that are going to make, make sure that your brain develops in a much healthier way. If you were subject to traumatic experiences as a child, that can have an impact on the way that your brain develops. So there's lots and lots of ways that your brain might develop differently to your twin sibling, for example, or somebody that you grew up with. As I've said in the past when it comes to these lessons, I'm not trying to set seeds for conspiracies, but I am trying to encourage people to do their own research and just to think a little deeper um, when it comes to the things that we've been taught or the things that we've just taken for granted. And when it comes to the brain, because we've had subtle signs or subtle symbols um, threaded through our lives, it can be really, really easy just to fall into that trap of believing a certain thing because you just take that as the truth. And now is the time really to be questioning those things and just broadening your mind to the realisation that pretty much anything is possible. And a lot of things that we've been taught in the past we're realising now just aren't the full truth. The other thing to think about is advertising. So advertising companies definitely use our brain against us. Uh, they can use colours, they can use songs, all sorts of things to trigger certain cravings. But really, you've just been conditioned to, to feel a certain way when you hear a certain song. I am doing a whole series of these lessons, just giving you a snapshot on different themes, just 10 minutes on different topics. And you can go onto our website, which is www.adifferenthumandesign.co.uk and download the worksheets that go alongside of it that just give very brief 
snippets of the information that I have covered.